month ago i was in washington dc and in that trip i decided to go to george mason university campus and during that campus a lot of you came to meet me and i think about 10 to 15 of you walked with me to the entire campus showed me what the campus look like not only that we shared the harsh reality of an international student and they gave us like whole truth about like what will life look like as an international student in gmu if you are deciding to go to george mason university this video is for you you make sure to watch entire video if it does provide you value please let me know in the comment section which next university would you want to watch i'll let you enjoy the episode now hi right, cool we're gonna talk about cost of living let's start there how what is the cost of living i heard rumors that this is very expensive so let's start whoever wants to go first So yeah, cost of living in Fairfax is a bit expensive. It depends on where do you live, how far you live uh, from campus. Yeah. So there is a Mason Ville place which is very closer to university, and there the cost of living on an average you can say for sh- one sharing in a sharing room you can say four hundred to four hundred fifty. Four hundred to four hundred fifty per head. Okay. So that's not bad. That's not bad though. I, I mean DC. I was in DC and it was twelve hundred dollars. So. Yeah. But yeah. They must be sharing with six other people, apartment. Oh, gosh, okay, got okay. That's other. Uh, not six, but five, I think, because. I uh, didn't ask them. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah but yeah. coming to tuition exp- expenses, it's very expensive. Uh, it's cost around seventeen hundred dollars for one credit. One. So we for data analytics engineering, we have to do thirty credits. So mm-hmm. it's going to take around maybe a thousand dollars per year for for two semesters. Okay. So around fifty thousand dollars for fifty six thousand dollars. Yeah, fifty. Yeah, fifty six thousand dollars for two years. So I feel it's very expensive. Right. Uh, it is very difficult for us to manage uh, our living expenses, our tuition expenses without a good job here. So yeah, I feel yeah, it's very expensive. Okay. Let's get back to the cost of living because I want to understand. Okay. It's a uh, four hundred to five hundred dollars for rent. Yeah. That, is then, the the campus, that is near the campus. That is near the campus. campus. Yeah. Now, so far is expensive. The further you go, the lesser it gets. Yeah. The far. Okay. Got it. I mean, to put it to context, a two B two B near the campus will cost you twenty eight hundred. Okay. So two bedroom is uh, twenty eight hundred. Okay. Got it. Again, so it's not a problem. Again, there is one more thing to share that if you get an independent house, then you can get entire house in just twenty eight hundred. Okay, in that house, but then that could have like multiple rooms in it. Yeah, multiple rooms. Like more than two. I am currently living at Courthouse Drive, where uh, we have taken leased uh, independent house, townhouse, and you can say there are five bedrooms, okay. five BHK. Nice. And we got that in twenty eight or twenty six hundred. So okay. that's a, in that way, this is cheap. That is cheap. Okay. So. But uh, so yeah. question is, how do people find usually housing? So there are many common ways. Like you can just go to apartment dot com, or the most easiest or common way is just uh, you join a group, WhatsApp group. Now uh, JMU will normally have some kind of international group where international mm-hmm. students just keep on posting if any rooms are available or if any uh, houses are available for lease extension or. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So five so, hundred. So there are three to four communities okay. uh, in Fairfax. Um, so one which is Mason Mill, uh, it is just uh, uh, inside the campus. Inside the campus, yeah. yeah. So, as I said, uh, it's a two bedroom to be uh, to be cost around two two thousand eight hundred. So I live in a place called Cavalier Court, so which is five miles away from the campus. Yeah. Um, there it is around two thousand four hundred, two thousand three hundred. So which is uh, four miles away from the campus. Mm. So. Yeah. Um, so we have around three to four popular communities in Fairfax, where most of the Indian communities. Yeah. Uh, students. Okay. Students. Students. Like, students. like nice. one is Masonville, and there's Avalon. Third is you can say Trillium. Fourth is Fairfax Square, and the, because the intake has increased, people and students started exploring new places like Gainsborough, Court, Ridgewood, Ridgewood, mm. and what? Courthouse. Cavalier. Cavalier Court. Cavalier. Cavalier Court. Mm. Uh-huh. That is also a thing. Okay. Nice. And so for. Generally, four hundred to five hundred dollars is rent, yes. and then another five hundred roughly for grocery and eating out. It's and like all two, two to three hundred. Two to three hundred. Yeah. Okay, because it's not so expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So two to three hundred. Okay, so eight hundred to thousand dollars is yeah. Yeah. max cost of living. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then your masters. I know this split. Some are computer science and some are the data analytics. So is it all program thirty six credits? It's thirty credits. Thirty credits. Okay, nice. And each 
is uh, 191700 yes. yes okay so 56000 for tuition fees and then 30 credits i mean uh, i don't know 1000 dollars so yeah. how many how long is the two years two, two years, years okay yes. so 24000 yes for cost of living so it's around 85000 yeah. it's around 85000 85000 85, yeah okay. You also get a chance to complete it under like two years because mm. Mason offers a lot of like summer programs, summer courses, mostly for data analytics. I think they do offer uh, courses in CS as well. Uh, yeah. It's your interest if you want to get yeah. it done in one. Unless you got internship. Uh, yes. Yeah. Even if you mm. have an internship, I think you can uh, actually enroll into a course yes. oh, with 20 hours. Uh, we don't have co-op, but we can enroll for CPT and also like uh, get a course done mm. in that semester. Okay. Even if you don't have co-op, there we can work uh, part time as an intern. So yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a problem with if we don't have co-op. Allows only twenty hours. Yeah. E even in summer. Summer. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we can work on campus and off campus as an intern. Right. So okay. should not be a problem. Yeah. Um, I would like to add that even though this uh, the fee structure is actually huge, we get a lot of on campus opportunities. So we have something called like I guess every university has it. Like we have something called handshake on which yeah. uh, the most of the jobs get posted. Yeah. If you're actively applying and you're active on. Uh, on handshake i'm sure every one of us mm. have done an on campus job in right. the, like you know master's time yeah. from your second semester you get opportunities to work as graduate teaching assistants mm. graduate research assistant so one of my friend even like actually worked uh, for a professor who was doing research for nasa mm. i worked as a graduate teaching assistant mostly cs students get to work for cs department as teaching assistants or research assistants and data analytics students get to work for the business school or the the statistics uh, department okay uh, as the uh, TAs or RAs. Nice and so because of TA and RA mm -hmm. is there any benefit for tuition fees? Yeah, yes. There's a tuition yes. waiver. Definitely. We do have yeah go so, ahead. Go yeah ahead. so out of state because it's state so that's around three credits so if I can say like one subject would be waived off if we take like uh, three subjects uh, in, a, in one semester so one subject is waived off. And also we'll get a stipend of for this semester, it's ten thousand dollars. Nine thousand. Ten thousand yeah, dollars. Yes, okay. ten thousand dollars. Nine semesters. Yes. Uh, for nine months. Nine months. Nine, nine months. months. Okay. Not nine. No, months. nine days. Six months. months. For, semester. for this semester means five months or whatever. Okay, so per semester, per ten thousand. Per semester, per semester yeah. nine thousand seven fifty dollars. So, so no. one course yeah. becomes. Uh, Wait, okay. So you'll nice. get around fifteen thousand. Yeah. Because I'm a GI, so I know that this semester they are increased to ten thousand dollars per semester. Per semester, okay. And for so same as you GT. Get, can you extend it to all, all the semesters? Mm, yeah, if I right. get GTA ship, then yeah, I will again get $10,000. And plus, those benefits will be there. Okay. Scholarship as a waiver. Got it. If the professor has an open position, then it gets extended, or else we have to apply again. Okay. Uh, then yeah. also, Fine. we have a contract for one semester. On, uh, departments. For computer hmm. science departments, like once you get hired as a teaching assistant, then uh, most likely that would get extended. Or else in other departments, it's like uh, when you approach the professor, if he's teaching the course and he, uh, he's in the, I mean, if he's teaching the course, then you might have, have a chance uh, that Extending. the positions get extended. So, mm -hmm. yeah. If uh, semester I uh, applied through a handshake and got a new GRA job. And, uh, in first semester yeah, itself? Yeah. Okay, so, nice. so like, I thought people typically just get after first semester. Uh, yes, but the, I saw an opening and I applied. So and then I you got, got an interview. Okay. So it was uh, not in the computer science department, but it was from the uh, department of uh, systems engineering. Okay. So so it depends like based on first, uh, your performance, sometimes they extend, sometimes they don't. Okay. So my, uh, my contract was extended to uh, for the second semester also. Okay. So uh, it was a one year contract. So it, helps with uh, yeah so things. if total cost is roughly eighty thousand then ten thousand ten thousand so twenty thousand is gone yeah. still yeah. sixty thousand and then you probably get another course wave off yeah. or something so and then hopefully you'll have some more so basically you can take care of living expenses yeah. yes and groceries also yeah, yeah we yeah. can save a lot because if you see my scenario my total expense so the only rent is around four fifty and we can say food is around 150, right? You can take 600 something. Yeah. And that's what is my 
Yeah, so you are probably like making more money. So yeah, which in will, that way I will save. Yeah, yeah which yeah. which like I'm using that to pay my this tuition also. So, mm. yeah. so we do have this uh, installments where we can actually enroll, which would yeah. be like each installment, like for that semester, if I enroll in an installment, oh. it would be thirty dollars extra. Okay. So what nice. I would do is I would get a waiver. Uh, and I would enroll in the installments and I would pay my fees right. with the bi-weekly yeah. payment I would get from my teaching assistantship. Uh, because I came during the COVID, uh, I actually, we also had something called Stay Mason Grant, which is also like prevalent now. So you could like, if you need additional financial funding because of your circumstances back at home, like in India, if uh, if your parents are unable to fund your education or your loan is, your, you know, the bank is unable to give you the loan for that particular semester, you could write down to the Stay Mason Grant uh, team and they would give you up to $2,000 mm. per semester. Mm. So uh, students are able to like get around uh, $2,000 up to four times during their uh, coursework. Mm. Okay, so wrapping up the cost situation, looks like there's plenty of on-campus jobs. So people either get TA, RA or some on-campus job. And with that, you can cover cost of living and living expenses. And then tuition, obviously, depending on your situation, you figure it out. Yes. Okay. So, May, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to clarify one thing. There are many on campus jobs, but one thing you have to remember there are many students also. So you shouldn't be under a pretense that, okay, if there are many on campus jobs, I somehow manage. There are some worst case scenarios also where people do not get an on campus job. But you should not be disappointed because uh, there is a lot of competition. Uh, GMU increases its intake by, by every semester. So it's uh, natural. Also, you can get get a job in second semester or something mm -hmm. just by uh, applying through some unconventional ways or traditional ways like going to actually uh, some on-campus shops or something, mm -hmm. asking for a shop. Uh, jobs in person. Got it. Okay. So yes, it there is a lot of on-campus yeah. jobs, but yes. there's, there's also a lot of competition. competition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's actually one more position. I'm not sure uh, if, if actually it will be helpful for the incoming students. There's something called graduate professional assistant, mm -hmm. where each department actually has very limited uh, in, like, you know, recruitment for that. They actually waiver two uh, subjects as uh, in-state and on top of that they actually pay more and that mm. contract is like for one year so if you get a GPA it's called a GPA and if they get it uh, get it it's actually a blessing uh, and uh, yeah. they were, it would be a yeah, lot I mean, of Yeah, two help. courses is roughly $10,000. Yes. So right. what happens is she said instead. So in for GTA also, we get the same benefits. Mm -hmm. Like yep. six credits wherever we get. Okay. But as per institution rate, yeah. that is half of the outstitution rate. Oh. So as an international student, we have to pay as per outstitution. So it turns down to one course. Okay. Plus three credits you can say. Got it, got it, got it. For GTA, but it's, it's a benefit. Like but it's, you yeah. get another uh, credit. Mm. Another three credits are like, you know, cut down to in-state. Mm. But it's a very good that GT and RA has the highest pay. Mm. So I guess what is the secret sauce that how to get the job? <laughs> because I think we talked about the benefit, but how do people get job? Handshake. Handshake. Yes. So just be constantly on handshake. Yeah. Yeah. So can you get it before you come here? Yeah. I, actually uh, I just want I mean, to add one point uh, regarding GRA and GPA. So we can get a GRA when we are before we land here, but we cannot get a GTA because they have a criteria that we should complete at least one semester in George Mason. Okay. So uh, it's it's not possible to get a GTA yeah. before we come here. Yeah. But we can get a GRA or GPA. Uh, but it's very difficult for us to get a GPA because they need like recommendations from the professors, mm. like one or two. Uh, it depends on the GPA position mm. that we need two or three. Mm. So it's very difficult for us to get a GPA in the first semester. Mm. But once we come here and build connections, uh, I think it's uh, some easier yeah. to get a GPA once. Yeah. Actually, but some yeah. people do end up getting a job before even they land. Sounds yes. like yeah. you got it. Uh, because this is an arrow with computer science uh, department. But okay. for the, with the upper, uh, the departments, if you uh, just email professors and if they like your profile yeah. and what they want, they will just hire That's you. how I got my GTA position. For the oh, first, okay. In the first semester, so I have... So cold emailing, questions. sounds like cold emailing is another technique. Yes. Handshake plus cold emailing. Sometimes it is, it works. Uh, some professors uh, welcome cold emails, but 
some professors are bit uh, yeah i mean they don't like <laughs> i would say because they are too busy and they don't want to we do get warnings from the yeah. department yes. itself not to like directly email the professors oh. so we should be kind of careful yeah. and actually uh, i would recommend that you actually go to the professors uh, page uh, go through their research and if that interests you that is when you like drop an application rather mm, like yeah. uh, then just you know, like yeah. all email yes yeah. spam everybody Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one thing uh, I would recommend is actually in university there are a lot of labs. Okay, where well, there are every time some research project that is going on on any kind of cutting edge technology. So I would uh, for me it personally work because uh, you should just um, go to the lab, just talk to uh, the people who are working there who are mostly students, uh, PhD students or sometimes master students also. if you get an understanding of what project they are working you can like talk to the professor also this uh, shows the professor that you are interested mm. and if you have a good profile to show if you have a good connection with the professor on some common ground that okay you both are interested on this particular subject and you just follow he can maybe mm. give you a job mm. yeah. yeah exactly i would say we should not we should just not spam but to send a mail if it's yeah. if it's yeah. really open like it yeah so someone who got an admit from gmu for fall 2024 uh they can look at handshake open positions they can start applying yes and if they are interested in professors in research they can start emailing them yes exactly. yeah i got yes. because i want to share one point because in summer i got a gra ship by emailing only mm. uh, not like they haven't posted on handshake that thing So that is also one thing to yeah. So, so cold email, handshake, both. Yeah. But that's only for D- GA and GTA and GPA. But that's only for GRA. I would say. GRA, okay. For GTA ship, computer science department, only handshake is there. Yes. Okay. So, and what about the other on campus, like cafeteria so, and all that? So there are uh, dining jobs as well. So there are two uh, major uh, dining th- three. Right. One is south side. One is Ikes and the what's the other? Globe. Yeah. Globe. 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 Yeah. Ah. So basically, uh, you have to go and reach out to them. Okay. So mostly so you have to physically go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes they'll post on handshake. So you need to register for that. So you'll get personalized mails. So okay. you can come to this hiring mm-hmm. event so that they can go mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. uh, like they can get the job. Yeah. So and what's the salary in Virginia? Like, what's uh, the minimum pay? Pay is was fifteen. Now I think it's reduced to twelve or thirteen. Twelve or thirteen? Thirty. Yeah. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve. That's too less. Uh, okay. There's another website. I'm not sure if anybody goes to that now. But I used to look for jobs on jobs.gmu.edu. You yeah. get additional department-wise jobs. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. On that. Nice. Yeah. As for other jobs, I think networking is kind of the key again. I. Used to go to the gym, gym quite a lot, and I got along with the fitness attendants there. So that guy knew that I was interested in the fitness stuff. So while applying, I could write their name that this guy is recommending me, yeah. and he vouched for me during yeah. the interview process. So that's how I got in. Mm, nice. Okay. So most so, of the dining jobs, like all the people will be working on dining jobs, like most of the students, and there are different uh, jobs like uh, student centers. There is one thing called student centers where. The, Uh, when there are events going like on, like right? so they need yeah. to yeah. 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 event assistant, yeah. yeah. technician, yeah. technician. Yeah. Also, there are positions like photography positions where yeah. you need to show your uh, portfolio. Yeah. So, yeah. Last semester, I worked uh, in a similar position where nice. Um, okay. I had to showcase my portfolio. Okay. Yeah. Cover letter works very well here. Okay. If you have a strong portfolio and cover letter, nice. Then yeah. Got it. So the guide for students who are planning to come is uh, handshake, cold emailing. But don't call email without like don't spam it. Yeah. Look at the research and then call email. Networking, uh, make sure that you are touch with all the seniors, and then finally, uh, what was the fourth thing? I think ah, going to the department physically to yeah. the job fair. So uh, there's so, something. So, so coming back to dining. So okay. um, I worked um, in dining basically. So whole whole dining is op- being operated by Sodexo. So. Um, I worked in Sodexo in my first semester, mm. um, and then in second semester I got in. I got a desk job. Um, so basically, uh, most of the uh, Indian community here, like uh, they try to go into dining in the first semester because um, it's hard to get um, mm. any desk job without any uh, uh, GPA or uh, yeah. you know the uh, grade. Uh, yeah. So 
after you get the grade, a good grade in first semester, so people start applying to desk jobs in GTAs, GRAs. So mm. uh, I got into a desk job in second semester, and I got a GTA in the third semester. Mm. Um, so that's how uh, it worked yeah. for me. So I worked in Sodexo in the first yeah. semester, and then desk yeah. job, and then a GTA yeah. shift. So What's the interview like? Is it hard, or is it pretty much like, tell me a little bit about yourself, and then you're hired? Just tell me a little bit about yourself, I'd say. <laughs> for dining job, that's it. But for GTA, GRA, and GPA, it's uh, sometimes intense, depends on the party's position. Okay. So if you have a GRA position, uh, which is a lot of, it's a lot of it research or something, yeah. you have like two or three rounds. So it's very difficult for, it actually depends on the professor too. Yeah. So yeah. if he's interested in something, uh, he wants to concentrate on a particular thing, he expects you to have that skills. So uh, I would say mm. first professor and the department mm. and yeah, coming to dining, it just tell me about yourself. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Like for as I'm a GRA now, so my interview was like like he said like right like it depend on professor, and he just showed my saw my resume I guess and he found that he I have some experience in that particular thing he wants to work with he's working on and that's it he hired me. Mm. Okay. Okay. I think it depends on each position you're applying for. I kind of work for five on-campus jobs. Wow. So one of uh, the directors for business school actually reached out to me if I'm interested to work as an analytics student worker. So it was like to work on analytics, like how many admissions are going on, how many applications are open, oh, how many are closed, yeah. how many people are actually coming in. Mm. So for that, I had to like give an Excel uh, like Excel assessment. assessment. Yeah. So that is when after like a interview, I had to give the assessment, and mm. then I had to explain him how I approached that assessment, and that is how I got hired for mm. that. But uh, there are other jobs I did for uh, information desk. That was mostly if I knew uh, I did it at a different campus, which is half an hour away. Uh, during that time, because it was COVID, we didn't have shuttles, so it was mostly how I know how I know to go there, mm. and how, if I know the campus well enough uh, to guide somebody. Mm. So I think it's mostly communication, mm. and of, of course, if it is technical, uh, how hard the skills. Hard skill. and if it is a TA, uh, my professor who I work for, she just asked me how, if a student is unable to solve a problem what would be the approach of you know how would you, uh, how help, would you them? help them yeah. so it would be something like that mm. so. all right let's switch to f1 visa interview uh, if you can recall all of you are in third semester so obviously it's like quite some time now uh how was it was it hard was it uh, easy or is like oh George Mason like you visa approved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me it was like for me it was well, okay. like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I know it's a obviously very yes. famous university, yeah. but uh, I'm curious like what was yours like? I would say just be be like you're going to a passport office instead of a visa interview <laughs> because I was I, I I just had one question why George Mason okay so I just mentioned the pros and cons over George Mason and then uh, I had nothing else I had my sister here so I was asked about my sister what is she doing and then I was done so she was on a visa. Yeah, she was she okay. had a F1 visa from Northeastern, so mm. I was asked that question. Then later on, how and you didn't lie, obviously. You said yeah, like, yeah. I mentioned that in my DS one hundred and sixty. So nice. Yeah, okay. it cool. was good. And then my expenses, uh, how I manage my okay, finding, finding, finding. How are you gonna find your yeah, education? But no documents were asked. Nice. Cool. Oh, what about you, George Mason? That's it. Like which university? I said George Mason, and why George Mason was the question, and then which other admits. Like the generic question then, which other admins have you taken a loan? And that's it. Okay. So, so for me, it was asked like, why George Mason and uh, what are the courses that you are taking? Okay. So how does your work experience will be relating to this? Mm. So that's what the uh, question that uh, interviewer asked me. Okay. So yeah, I, I basically answered based on those lines. Coursework. So your yeah. answer was focused so on So I course. mentioned about the concentrations uh, which they have. So they have like 10 concentrations. So they, we have a lot of options uh, in data analytics engineering. Uh, but uh, I would say I would talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because so that I mentioned that during my interview nice. about the concentration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was your F1 visa? Yeah, even mine was like similar to theirs because I, I just had an interview for like one minute and they asked generic questions uh, like w what's uh, why did you go choose GMU and uh, I they just asked me one typical question what does my father do unlike everybody uh, because. Uh, my father is from pharma, uh, unlike a separator, so, uh, and uh, 
they asked me if whether i want to c- come back after my uh, master's course and obviously like everybody even i said yes <laughs> yeah 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 nice i think um i saw your videos or some yeah. videos on yeah. youtube um, so what i got to know is um, they see about the funding so yeah. i knew george mason was expensive and yeah. um, i think they concentrated on like um, how i'm uh, showing my funding um, so i made sure my funding is right so uh they asked me what my uh, uh, uh father uh, works as and uh, they saw my uh, document they asked me my financial statement oh they do yeah. okay nice okay so um luckily yeah yeah you my, have everything you know obviously your statement is good yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh yeah so i showed my funding right um i think that's the thing. so i just told them okay so financing and why george mason is sounds like a common yeah thing. common question yeah right? so because it's 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 expensive it's so very expensive they and really and see the funding yeah, yeah. So. okay nice was your same too no mine no? was okay. not like similar to any of these people <laughs> they did not even ask me which university i was going to uh, so i actually had a b2 rejection uh, okay. previously i came here in 2021 mm. uh, in 2019 i had a, a tourist visa rejection so my so i wasn't expecting i was at least not hoping they wouldn't uh, they would ask me about my brother who lives here but the first question was is, a, is your brother still in the united states <laughs> oh. i lost hope like okay i'm not getting my visa today but uh, they just wanted to make sure that he's not the one who's paying for my education okay. but it's my parents who are going to find mm. everything mm. and they asked a couple of questions about my father's profession because he works for the government of india mm. then um, uh after that they just asked me if i had any backlogs uh when i was oh, working, when i was in india yeah. and what my work experience was yeah. uh, i was then currently working for the indian railways so they asked me why i was leaving uh, the job there and going yeah. coming to the us yeah. uh then i just got my visa mm. nothing uh-huh. regarding the university so or all about that. your history yes, and yes. finances yep nice okay Okay cool so you guys are all here in United States uh, I think one thing which people don't prep for is the land and then they have to make it to the university or their apartment uh, and they don't prep for like who's going to come pick us uh, up from airport to the apartment uh, how did that is that a problem here or it's very flexible you can for how- few people it is flexible because few of them have uh, friends before or relatives here yeah but uh, for me it happened what happened was when i was in tra- traveling i traveled through emirates okay so i had my stop in dubai yeah when i was traveling in dubai i had a k- k- carry on suitcase with me with all my apartment everything in bold letters yeah and few people came to towards me few uh, few indian students and they were like uh, i i i know this address and we live above you <laughs> and they, this happened and then we went together in the car when we came outside yeah. iad yeah. and they had relatives so uh we put all our all our luggage in their cars and we booked a single car i came with the least amount possible other than relatives amount right right yeah. right yeah that's my experience as of yeah when i came so with. and so you how does peep like how does how do you did you guys prepare for coming i mean if you have relative they're going to come help you prepare yeah, and we, uh, what we it. basically do is i was generally fixated that i need to t- take a cab how, how much ever possible and i need to go to room as as long as i go to the room that's enough so yeah. that's the amount uh, that's the mind i fixed in mind okay and then luckily i met my friends over there and it turned out very so there is no like seniors who come to pick you up there are seniors yeah. where we where the message in the groups that they we, we are available on these days and these days and these times so that so you could message us prior you place. could message us prior we could pick you up yeah. but i i was i wasn't that aware of these whatsapp groups and all yeah, yeah, yeah. That, by that time yeah so luckily right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah okay. i decided to take care of myself i just put an international internet pack on my sim card and i checked if my forex card was working i just put it in the uber app and that just came home nice. it took like 30 dollars yeah i yeah. think i paid the highest amount <laughs> <laughs> what did you pay how much how much okay how far is the airport it's 20 minutes it's straight forward i would say it's like you know 
going by yourself to the airport and coming even if it's the first time that is the easiest thing anyone so just do. uber it exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. uber and i personally like if they are not having like a credit card or a forex card i personally help few people like book their cab from like like a lift or a uber okay, from so yeah, the airport yeah, yeah. because that would like be cheaper for them it right. would cost around 26 at the max $30. Okay. So, now so. we have a metro to directly from the airport until yeah. like the oh, but metro you think think back then yeah yeah, yeah. 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 we do have a metro but the nearest metro station is Vienna yeah. so uh, it's very difficult for us to travel yeah. back as from long there. as we have a fr- so. friend with us waiting for us outside we can take a metro and come yeah. home okay. Okay. yeah with the reason one so why well, was your most expensive yeah so it's like uh i planned i had my international data pack so what i thought was i'll just land here and uh, i can just uber uh, just uber or lift yeah. and then i can go yeah. so the moment i landed here i don't know for some strange reason uh my network did not i mean it did not work yeah so i was thinking so my i literally know uh, i literally don't know anyone here mm. so i just came out taking three bags and one now laptop bag i just came out and then i so left and right there is a bo- sign board like uh, caps uh, yeah. taxis there, uh, taxis and caps so it was a washington cab so not a lot of people might know that yeah. so it was a huge car so it was first uh, landing there and getting get, i got into that huge car so i told the address so even i uh, mentioned the wrong address because a, in india how it's like street names and <laughs> all right yeah it is not like that here like uh, as you might know number yeah. yeah the door number is you know So yeah it will pinpoint to, to the exact location so i just pinpointed that and uh, he talked me very well he is from kenya i guess so he talked with me very well and uh, he uh, dropped me there so it was 45 dollars okay and then uh, what he said was so he gave he talked me uh, like very well yeah so he he told me uh, what i told if, if if the information that i gave you uh, sounds good and uh, if you like this conversation you can give me tip So since that was the first time uh, me giving tip right I don't know what to press there is <laughs> 9% 12% 15% I guess on that yeah, 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 on the I just press yeah. 9% I don't know what to press like it was Fifty-four dollars. Okay. Oh. And he was the one who survived alone for one uh, week. Uh, we were together, so two days. So yeah, uh, we yeah. two days. We were together. He was our savior actually when we came in. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> cool. Let's talk about health insurance because it's something people don't pay attention as well. So, is it compulsory to have GM use health insurance? Yes. Yes. Okay. How expensive is that? It's around seventeen fifteen dollars, seventeen fifty dollars per semester. Around seventeen fifty. Yes, but actually, what? Uh, oh. Actually, they have a very good uh, plan. Uh, I actually had a surgery here, so uh, it cost me very less. So I'd say it's worth it. Okay. So it's Se- so seventeen fifty per month per semester. Per sem. Okay. Yeah. Per semester. Yeah. So. Four semester roughly around seven thousand. So it's actually yeah. Fall we have one plan. Uh, so spring and summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. 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 Cover summer as well. Okay. Spring it's not summer. just confined to the university. You can go to. It's actually Aetna in health insurance that yes. they offer. So you can even like go. Out so you can get other ones, other ones yeah. as well. Yeah. Like network hospitals are covered in that. Okay. Uh, and so, but you are obviously you had surgery. What did you do? Oh. Honestly, I was alone. I was here during summer, yeah. but I I luckily had my aunt here. But uh, Aetna has a lot of uh, this. The student plan is very flexible. Yeah. So uh, I just went to the Aetna app. Uh, I found the in-network hospitals. I don't know what's primary care. I don't know what's urgent care. I don't know what's emergency. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's a nearby emergency room here. Oh so no. <laughs> I, I honestly had no idea, but I had to go there. Okay. So I went there and they charged me. They, they didn't charge me anything actually, but later on after a month or two, I got a bill of two fifty dollars, and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> then later on. Uh, I figured out what's primary care, urgent care. Then I went to my aunt, and luckily I was there. Nice. But health insurance, Aetna uh, student health plan really covered a lot. So if without health insurance, uh, I would get around twenty thousand uh, dollars for just for my surgery. Uh, but luckily, because I had the student plan, I had to pay around two thousand or two thousand five hundred. So the bill was to twenty thousand dollars. 
uh, yeah, overall my emergency room, my surgery, my doctors, uh, I was wow. that I had to take an MRI, I had to take a CT. Wait, what happened to you? <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually, uh, I mean, I had an accident. You don't have to share it, it's personal. No, no, it's not personal. Okay. I had an accident back in India. So a, a stone went inside my hand here. Uh, I just had some extra skin here, okay. but honestly, it did not affect me for well, like almost three years. Okay. But later on during the summer, I don't know what happened. Uh, I had uh, a lot of blood coming out, pus coming out. Yeah. So to be honest, it would cost like around 10,000 rupees in India. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just to cut that. Yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but the thing here is, uh, it's totally different. The healthcare yeah. system is totally different. Yeah, and obviously you went to emergency room. So, <laughs> but you should not go there. <laughs> they should go to urgent care yeah. or family. Yeah, care. so they, yeah. they predicted something else like angiography and so many other blood clots and everything. So that's why I had to take an MRI, I had to take a C. I had my intern here during the summer and I didn't want to leave that because yeah. that I got that opportunity because I struggled a lot, so I didn't okay. want to leave that. Okay. So that's the reason I was like, let anything happen. I'll just stay here and get my surgery done. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm happy now. I figured that out by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, to add to that, the bill of 250, you don't have to pay at once. You get the chance yes. to, to pay like, in, you know, install in installments that. because yeah. you're a student. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, that, that is helpful. Nice. Like you could pay yeah. in six or four. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever but whatever. not having would have costed you $20,000. So. So better, yes. I mean, you yes. have to have health insurance, yeah. so you can't go without health insurance. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about coursework because that's the, because that's what you said in the visa interview is the most happening part of it. So is it really worth it is what like the question is, uh, like this is the $80, $80,000 question. Is it worth, like, would you recommend your future students like come to GMU or like, no, I've lived enough now. I would see some other university. Uh, so there are a lot of mixed opinions here. So coming to my opinion, I'd say data analytics engineering, uh, it's, it's not worth, I don't say it's not worth it. It depends on what subjects you choose. So, uh, but, uh, so I, I wanted to do a concentration in data mining, if, uh, in uh, data analytics engineering, as I mentioned, there are yeah. so many concentrations. Yeah. So what happened with me is, uh, there are very, uh, I had the plan back in India, I wanted to take a set of subjects in the second semester and third semester. But later on when I moved here, I had a discussion with my advisor and I was told that I cannot take this concentration uh, because uh, I have to do some CS subjects. Mm. So that's the reason uh, I, I was not eligible. But later on, I appealed to the university and uh, I got my concentration approved. Uh, so I continued that concentration during my second semester, but later on, I was not able to continue because there are limited options available in data analytics engineering. Mm. So uh, all the CS classes which I had to take were all booked. And the, co the core uh, class, I did not get a uh, seat in that. So I had to drop that concentration. So I'd say uh, it, it's uh, it's not worth it if you take like super easy subjects. There are super easy subjects that I can complete like in one and a half year with seven and a half year courses during this summer and uh, fall. So I, if you ask me, that's eight thousand dollars. It's not worth it for if you make it easy. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to learn something out of the course, you have like a very good set of courses. Uh, so I took uh, seven thirty six AI seven thirty three applied machine learning. Uh, the intro to NLP, advanced NLP. So if you if you are someone who wants to go towards data science or data uh, data analysis and all that stuff, so I would suggest uh, choose the right track the right subjects you would like to before you move here to George Mason because <laughs> and also also make sure what uh, what professors you are taking mm. because uh, uh, because there are a lot of professors uh, who just make it easy to be honest and when you say make it easy you mean like the coursework is super easy the coursework is not super easy but the professors make it easy by giving like very easy subjects uh, sorry very easy assignments okay. so you just have like two or three assignments and it's just theory you don't do any coding or something so you're uh, feeling like you're not learning as much as you could yes, have yes and not ready for the yes. industry yes call. so that's why okay. i feel like yeah so for computer science uh, actually 
there are such courses but uh, i think uh, computer science gives us a lot of advanced courses also which are actually very relevant to the current market mm. uh, it can be in cyber security it can be in machine learning also so these are the two considerations it gives so i personally took a, a few advanced courses in machine learning and uh, i feel like the professors here are very accomplished in their field so which makes them uh, like a really a good at their jobs to teach so even though the some courses might be very difficult mm. but the professors are very available they have office hours they help us in assignments even the gps do mm. and some of the assignments are very uh, like some courses are very uh, interesting because they have project in it instead of exam yeah. and uh, those project you can uh, use it as an experience when you do the project right so yeah, it's yeah, yeah. fun also to do so would you say it was worth it for you 100% yeah yeah so yeah. talking about cs department so i see i was mentioning so there are two concentrations in cs uh, cyber security and machine learning um the main thing about this is uh, the course registration part so it's first come first serve so mm. there there will be like 100 seats okay uh, just in in a minute it's, uh, all it's not a minute. for the context for people who are watching how many students are there in computer science um like all semesters like um, i don't know like nearly 500 maybe 200 to 300 to 500 so all semesters come in like all the new okay ha total students may be 500 class yeah. class okay and so but the popular yeah. courses so if you want to do machine learning concentration there are these uh, subjects called machine learning data mining and advanced nlp so these yeah. are the core courses that you have to finish for machine learning concentration so they would have like 100 seats this semester so they'll be done in a minute so if you want to uh, work towards your machine learning concentration and you don't get that subject mm. this semester and that's it you're uh, so you're losing uh, so, so do you okay this was something i heard in asu yeah. that uh, people had to wake up at like exactly. 4 a.m and like refresh refresh yes. refresh so um, that they can get us or it's not like that in a.m but it's like around 11 a.m or 11 a.m yeah okay so okay. we we keep a timer <laughs> it's like a countdown from okay. 10 59 we we'll just count down and when it is 11 o'clock we'll try to yeah so 11 o'clock is uh, yeah they release it at 6 a.m in the morning so they are already up at 4 and 5 and like one hour before they are like ready to yeah, go so and yeah still they lose it because within seconds they were saying that it's just it just yeah like, people register it. only the only some courses get Uh, that must demand same day school but yeah. uh, full but uh, there are some a few courses that you can like book uh, you don't have to hurry mm. i would also say that computer science is worth in at george mason because mainly mainly due to its coursework and professors are very good in research if you are someone looking for research stuff then george mason is very good and also courses as my friend says that it all depends on how like if you get those courses or not because the courses should be packed in in booked in like mm. in seconds seconds yeah. Yeah. yeah so if you get a good course like i got a data mining course i got an nlp course and they are they were really very good professors yeah. were research oriented so they made it very even more practical mm. as per industry standard so i had a very good experience till now nice so you would say worth it for you and you will get a lot of opportunities as a gra gta in computer science department yeah so. yeah Okay, why why do you not agree? I think even I had like a two and a half years of work experience, but and I worked on data analytics tool itself. Uh, but uh, for you, like you know, in India to become a data analyst, they were either asking a five year experience yeah. or a master's degree. Yeah. So when you are getting into coursework, that is when you will be able to get a master's degree. Yeah. And. when i was applying to the university we had applications differently like because we had 10 concentration when you were applying to mason you had the opportunity to apply to apply analytics ait separately gbus like business analytics separately you can choose your concentration while applying or you can choose an individual course of study i went with an individual course of study because when i get into the market or when i'm applying for a job uh it i will not be confined to get into a, a particular domain for example business analytics will only help me like get into business and as work as a business analyst so as he was mentioning like ait courses he was unable to get that concentration 
but i think if you were clear since beginning that those are the courses you want to take you would have like you know dropped an application for both it doesn't say that you are just you know mm. it's not confined that you are only up, uh, going to apply for an individual course of study mm. so you have the choice of dropping multiple applications and you know for a specialized specialization and also for an uh, no concentration mm. application so, so what i think what he's saying is like the courses he took uh -huh. doesn't feel challenging yeah so there are basic courses which are like visualizations i'm sure which uh, in india for three years experience they do not introduce you to a tableau mm. or r in india maybe now it is uh changing, changing yeah. but back when i came like in 2021 there were like very uh, few companies that were actually using r or stata yeah. or tableau yeah. but here in my coursework is where i learned all the visualization tools and python i did learn back in my bachelor's but uh, it is like helpful for you to have it and it. i did yeah. learn azure i think it all depends on the co coursework you choose yeah. and uh, people do get away with easier courses like 500 level courses and then graduate because they take you know they just want to like go into the industry as quickly mm. as possible mm. get a job but uh, you i think you need to have like a plan on how do you see yourself you do you want to see as a data engineer or a data analyst or a data scientist or a business analyst and then choose accordingly and that is how i think it helped me uh, like you know uh, in getting a job yeah. as well yeah during that process mm. Okay. And we do have a capstone project in our final semester where you get to work with a company like here. Uh, they uh, like it's a real time project where we interact with the client, get the requirements. Everybody in the team gets to work as a product owner and as a developer and uh, scrum master. Uh, mm. You know, you have these roles. Yeah. You get to interact with the client yeah. and then work on it. Mm. So I think it was pretty helpful mm. and. Uh, of course, uh, the work uh, environment in uh, India is completely different and the expectations are different and yeah. expectations here are completely different. Right. So right. I think uh, yeah. that is why I feel it is totally worth it. Yeah. And I think it, for me, uh, it was, yeah, obviously, I, mean, I didn't study here, so I have no idea. But I feel like it could also mean uh, people might be at different level of their understanding of that topic yes, yeah. yes. and that's why they might feel like oh, this is like so easy for me yes. because like they are curious mind and they are like studying on their own whatever but so okay interesting so some people are like okay it's worth it some it's not worth it cool cool let's talk about what's the one thing i want to hear from everybody one thing you would do differently uh, now that you've done three semesters like I know it's probably like more deeper question, so. Differently in the sense. In your entire master's journey. Maybe choose different university, maybe do choose classes differently, roommates differently. Your roommates are here, so you probably won't talk about it. <laughs> but uh, uh, anything would you feel like, I wish I would have done this little differently. Yeah, maybe know more about the coursework. As I mentioned, I was not able to take the data mining concentration. So maybe uh, I should have uh, emailed the advisor before landing here mm -hmm. and know more about the uh, concentration as I wanted to become a data. I want to become a data scientist. So I think uh, data mining is uh, that con such a concentration which helped mm -hmm. me with that. So I, I would go back yeah. and know more about the... Okay. But coming to uh, the university life here, I would say George Mason has a very good university life here, so I do not feel anything about that. So I enjoy in the on campus. It's a really it's a beautiful campus. Yeah. Uh, I I get to uh, study. I get to uh, relax. I get I can do anything I want here. Yeah. So there are a lot of so cool options. So nothing about university life you would do differently. You would leave. Yes. Maybe I have a girlfriend or so. Cool. Okay. What well, about you? Would you do anything differently? Or yeah, like my I would have person? made. I wish I would have made a good, uh, correct choice in, in related to my courses okay. selection. Okay. Yeah, I start. I should have started reaching out to managers, in that way because I don't have that many seniors friends, so I could not get right. Managers is in the people who are working in industry. Yeah. Okay. And, on campus jobs. On so campus jobs. Dynamics. Okay. Got it. So, but I could. I didn't do that, and I didn't get any job for the first semester. But you ended up getting GRA, GPA, GPA in the second so. semester. <laughs> that's, uh, that, 
good thing. Yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. What about you? Uh, for me, uh, back when I was in India, I don't have any idea regarding what courses I have to do, and I need. I, need, I have. I had an idea which were the mandatory courses I need to do, but not about the whole course structure I need to do. So. It would have been better if I had known earlier what courses so I like could do. So like more and, research, yeah. more planning, yeah. figuring out like what yeah. my life would look like yeah. exactly. in terms of courses. Yeah. Exactly. Got it. Okay. So I could have planned my masters differently. So the reason why I'm saying this is like I had a, a dilemma whether to choose this university or the university which is somewhat less uh, cheaper than this. Yeah. So now after the experience, like after the one after one year experience, I could have planned my masters differently. Like I could have chosen a university which has less tuition fees. So and I could uh, do more courses like uh, learn from other uh, uh, online courses, right? Yeah. So I could spend this money. Ah, there. smart. What happens is like when when we spend a lot of tuition fees here, and uh, when you want to study or you do any certifications or learn from some other yeah, online like courses, Coursera, Google yeah. course, yeah. LinkedIn, it's, it's, yeah. it's a burden on top of this. Yeah, true. So it's a, it's a decision like when yeah. when we want to spend. For example, if I want to uh, buy some lead code or strata scratch, right? Yeah. It's Hundred dollars or one fifty dollars. Right. right. So we need to be more conscious on taking that decision. Yeah. Considering all these things and also tuition fees. Mm, that so is very smart. I, yeah. I could have planned different, like choosing a CSU state. But industry. then, uh, what about like you know people say I I obviously did cheaper state. My entire yeah. masters was done in thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Uh, including cost of living, so uh, because I had on campus job, etc. Yeah. So obviously, for me, I, I come from. I totally agree with that. But then a lot of people argue that I didn't have like brand name, like yeah. George Mason. Yeah. I agree. Come to that. Yeah. So okay. the brand name, uh, I think brand name is for top thirty or forty universities. I would say, and after that, every student falls into the same pool, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the. Great thing. I mean, the different uh, thing that I would have done, as I told, right? I I would have done some online courses, and I could have showcased that on LinkedIn, right? So that uh, your presence in internet matters. Yeah. Yes. So yes. that could have been uh, weighted more than yeah. the brand name. Yeah. So not uh, talking about the top. So you could have internet. created your more personal brand online yeah, yeah. by doing different things, etc. Because you have extra costs. Uh, cash available to do this versus yes, in, right. investing fifty five thousand dollars here. So in in that case, even location matters as well. Like if I have chosen some uh, mm. universities which are closer to California, for example, yeah. California State University. Yeah. So even the companies visit there, like career fairs, right? Right. That would be from the Bay or yeah. LA and all. Yeah. So what happened here was, since it is closer to DC, right? So a lot of companies come here that require US citizenship. And mm. there are a lot of companies which so, come so. here are from federal, right? Yeah. So when we go to career fairs, they ask for uh, US citizenship. Yeah. So that's a major drawback here for the yeah. companies mm. uh, come here. So yeah. Yeah, that's very insightful. Thanks for sharing. I think now people might not come to this. <laughs> 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 but uh, so that's that's thanks for being honest. That's awesome. but we are in DMV area. We are open to. Any of the East Coast part, so I think. What's the MB area? Uh, uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Okay, so sorry. Fairfax is, is such a location which is uh, just half an hour away to DC uh, and just half an hour away to Maryland. So we DMB area uh, has a lot of options here. So I would say uh, we can. Uh, DC, so right, so in the East Coast we can explore a lot of options. Yeah. So I would not. Uh, Uh, be competitive with West Coast though, but yeah, I feel like East Coast also has a lot of options. Yeah, but yeah, yeah that's that's a good point to add on there, as you mentioned. So there are a lot of federal jobs, but I feel like equally there are other oh, options yeah, as well as well. Yeah. Because it's just four hours away to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I feel like mm -hmm. there are a lot of options here as well. Okay. Also, if you need something, you should probably not hesitate. I I hesitated quite a lot. You should. Just talk to the professor right away, or send that cold email. Yeah, I did, and I paid the price for it. I got no DNR or nothing. Oh, uh, so yeah, it's fine though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so don't be in your comfort zone. Yeah, get out of your comfort zone. Ask, don't hesitate, and then pay more attention to the classes. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, if you kind of know that you want to be a software engineer, just don't go for the CS degree. Maybe SW courses would be better for you. Okay. These guys take BA. They knew they wanted to be data analysts. Even computer science offers 
some data analyst courses, but they didn't take serious. They made the right decision. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> know what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So figure out what you want. Yeah. What about you? Nothing. Not Nothing really. you would do differently. Nice. Really. Love it. Yeah, awesome. Cool. And what what do you think about the brand name? Do you feel like GMU brand name was like because of that brand name you got the job or got the intention? Uh, I don't think I only think the timing or the strategy I applied on how to apply for my jobs worked out pretty well. I have to thank my brother for actually prompting me to apply for jobs like pretty early. Like if if it was an on campus job, it was like pushing me to you know apply when I was back in India. Mm. So I would say if you're graduating in May twenty four, for example. By Jan 24, you need to have an offer, at least in your hand. <laughs> nice. So okay. for that, you need to like go back nine months, which will be like mm. August or uh, uh, July 23 is when you need to like start applying. Yeah. So if you are uh, like graduating a year before is when you apply for your jobs. Right. So, uh, and if, even if you have an offer in your hand, I would say don't stop. Just yeah. give yes. how many ever interviews as Collect possible. Collect more offers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in, because of the market instability. Yes. People have gotten their job rescinded yeah. and all yes. that. Yes, yeah. and all, I even tell my friends, I even push my friends, keep applying. The ratio is if you apply 1,000 jobs, you'll get one interview. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is that right. is the fund that right. like, I right. applied. So, yeah, so necessarily GMU wasn't like the factor like, oh, she's from GMU, I need to give her an interview. It wasn't like that. Like you mentioned, the top 30, uh, like, you know, that yeah. is extremely competitive and yeah. maybe that would help. But uh, coming to the university, not the branding, but definitely the alumni. The I experience. went on LinkedIn yeah. and I filtered out who was from GMU, where they are working. And that is how I actually applied for jobs because I could get referrals easily. Don't hesitate to ask referrals. You're not asking share of their money yeah. or their job. You're just asking for referrals. So and whoever I'm, needs, uh, I definitely, <laughs> definitely reach out. Cool. Awesome. What's the common mistakes you've seen international students make? Do not. Uh, they don't concentrate on their skills, but they uh, they just end up taking the. Uh, random subjects so i would say it is very important for us to build our skills as i as you were mentioning of the brand name i would say brand name is not something which you, which we uh which showcases ourselves i feel like it's very important for us to build our skills according to the industry and when you say skills like hard skills soft skills everything hard yeah. skills soft skills technical skills everything right. so i what currently i'm doing is as i'm in my third semester i'm honestly not applying for jobs as the situation is very bad right now yeah so what i'm just doing is i'm just going on linkedin and finding what employers are looking for right. so i'm currently planning to learn different technologies what yeah. industry is looking for yeah and take relevant subjects as well so i would I would I feel like that really helps everybody uh, because just because you have done some subject that does not get you a job. Mm. So I would say like uh, build your skills. That's that's where you get your you you succeed uh, in getting a job. Nice. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Any other common mistakes? I would say um, know what honor code is. Um, <laughs> know what honor code is. Honor um, code. Yeah, so if you copy someone else's stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. plagiarism. In my opinion, it is a good thing. It should be there. Don't copy. I have seen a lot of people waste their energy on on campus jobs. Like, you know, because the competition is a lot, people don't uh, generally get like immediately or instantly. Uh, I would say like, you know, then they go for uh, like finding out other jobs, like going to the managers. I would say they should like, you know, uh, have a timeline by when if they don't get it, I would say they have to put their energy in internships mm -hmm. because this is like temporary that would like help you like to your future. loans and yeah. also like technically and they would hire you for a full time. So just this on campus thing is temporary. You might not have it for two years, but your coursework and your complete concentration and putting all the energy in coursework would definitely mm. like fetch you a good internship yeah like your friend might have like an on-campus job but later you might have like yes. a full-time job yes so yes. that is the mistake yeah. uh, people do like go run behind yeah. campus yeah jobs. that's what i would say is like prioritize your on-campus job uh, like ga ta because they have tuition fees waivers yes. and all of those uh, and then 
after that, there are a lot of on-campus jobs which are related to your major, yes. like the software engineering, analytics, yes. if you get that, then get for that. But then when it comes to like labor job, then like you might want to like really think about it yes. because that 20 hours which you're spending there, yeah, you, maybe you'll make 600 to 800 dollars. What if that you invest that 800 dollars into yourself yes. by putting that 20 hours into the skills? take courses etc so 100% agree yeah. i hope this podcast was valuable if you enjoyed this i guarantee you you are going to enjoy this video which is going to be even more powerful and help you in your journey